It is time to bring in the man himself, uh, Frank Drake. He has spent his life looking for signals from intelligent aliens, from the earliest iterations of SETI and Project Ozma in 1960 and the creation of the Drake Equation, to the Arecibo message in 1974, to this very stage tonight. He continues his lifelong scientific quest to find intelligent life in the universe. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank Drake. Well, th <clears throat> thank you. This has been a very surprising and beautiful to me meeting we've had here. <clears throat> and uh, I was ready to tell you a lot of funny stories about Dan and, and uh, Paul, but they beat me to it. They told me most of my stories already. <laughs> But uh, underneath that, I think you sensed something that uh, maybe, maybe surprised you. We had here, and to which we're giving the award, two extremely accomplished senior scientists, Dan and Paul. And you might have expected them to behave like competitors. They knew somebody was getting a prize tonight and uh, they, they might be jealous or something. Uh, but uh, a thing you probably sensed, which is in fact something you find with all the people who do SETI, the good ones, that uh, SETI is, once you know what it's about, which is learning of other creatures like ourselves in space, what their civilizations are like, all of that, which is just going to change everything when it happens. They are, they realize that what they're trying to find is probably the most important discovery that can be found in science these days. And that it will, have enormous effects on our civilization, the way we live, and probably benefit in a great deal the people of Earth. And you would think, you would think a person who is on that search would realize that if they were to be the discoverer, that they would be a hero. They would be given every greater prize there is. And and as a result, they would become competitors. They didn't want to find, make the great discovery before someone else does. But as you saw tonight, uh, Paul and, and uh, Dan have, have in fact been very much doing the same thing and doing it better than anybody else in the world but there is no ego. You didn't see any ego in either, either of these people. And that's the thing that you find in people who are doing SETI. They realize early on in the game that what they're trying to do, the discovery they're trying to make is just profound and it's going to change everything. And is, a, is of such great importance that it should not be subjected to competitions and arguments and any of that. People will only work very hard to help each other to help that make that great discovery come to pass. And that is the way it has been in SETI ever since the beginning. And it's one of the reasons I and others love to be part of SETI because everybody is a friend. Every, everybody that's working in it is a colleague. If they're not, they go away soon, by the way. Uh, and so it's just a wonderful atmosphere in which to work. And uh, both, both Paul and Dan show that. They've been doing this now for oh, about 50 years. I don't know, I haven't quite worked it out. And they're not competitors. They help each other when they get a good idea, they tell the other one and uh, make the fancy radio receivers and all that without any competitive 
barriers while they're doing it. And I, I, ho I hope that uh, if there are young people who are watching what we are doing here tonight, they will realize that SETI is one of the best professions there could be in your, in your life. That the people you work with are the, some of the smartest people in the world, but they're friends. They're, they're helpful. They want you to succeed as much as they want to succeed. And that's a very good kind of job to have if you're gonna have a good life, which has been my good luck, of course, and has been Paul's and Dan's too. So, uh, I had to, I was gonna tell, tell you about uh, the time uh, Paul showed up at Arecibo when I was living there and was the director. He showed up with a suitcase and uh, came over, came to me and said, well, I asked him, why, why are you here? And he said, I, he said I'm, I'm going to do a SETI search. <laughs> I said, oh, how are you going to do that? And he said, he said well, I brought the radio receiver with me. And he said, this is my receiver. I call it suitcase SETI. And it was a suitcase in which he had built, a, 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 in which he put a very fine radio receiver he had made with his own hands, big enough to fit in that suitcase. But nevertheless, in the end, not only being a sensitive receiver, but one that could measure thousands, maybe millions of um, channels all at the same time. And uh, that was just an example of what, what Paul did. And <clears throat> Dan is the same way. Dan is famous in the world for being helpful to fledgling SETI activities. He has been very um, crucial in the construction of SETI programs all over, uh, in Japan, in Australia, in uh, uh, China, with that uh, big, great big new telescope they have. Uh, and I remember even once he, I was with him and he was on his way to Italy to uh, show them how to build a radio receiver to put on a, a new dish they had there at Bologna. And uh, Dan, Dan has put a great deal of effort in transmitting the, the plans and procedures for building and using very high quality SETI work all over the world. Another example of the way SETI people are out to find the prize, find the other civilization, and not to find glory for themselves. And that makes it a very delightful life to live with people like that. And uh, that's my message there, and I'll stop. Mike Drake, thank you so much. And everybody attending, this wraps up this year's Drake Awards. It has been an incredible pleasure for this citizen scientist to be welcomed and treated so nicely by all you actual scientists. I really appreciate it. Thank you to all the sponsors and friends of SETI for your continued support in these unusual times. And uh, we will wrap this up. For those of you with backstage tickets, please go back to the lobby and click on backstage. I'm Adam Savage. Let's see you guys next time. Thanks so much. <laughs>